Hello everyone, it is time to finish Apollo Justice. It is Sunday, which is kind of a bit weird to say, but hey, that's just how them apples go when I just die on the stream. Uh, let's see, just in time, indeed. Um, so, I was just thinking of just going through the Apollo Justice game and I I was originally thinking of continuing into another game, but I think I'm going to just let that be, because it, mm, at the same time though, I have some it's things... It's Sunday to know. <laughs> Tenno says no. Sadness. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that means we're just going to have to finish through the Apollo Justice game by itself. I hope you will enjoy that. I certainly will, uh, provided I don't have to uh, voice... Um, Mike uh, Meekins or uh, Brushel again because that is pain and suffering. So let's get straight into it. Also I need to just fix some overlays and fix some, some things, the last things. Uh, we shall hope indeed, and for some reason it's st suddenly started to become very, very hot in here, but oh well. Oh, right. I said I was hoping I wouldn't have to deal with this guy. And I had forgotten about where we were. Uh, joy. I'm gonna take a glug of water first. You want me to bring some uh, Yes, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm such a... Also, I think I just ate too much cake because now I'm just like feeling close to this now. But I had to finish the cake. Uh, couldn't let it go tomorrow. That was something to that effect back at the Bosch Bosch Club. Bow Bowl Club. Bosch. Bowl Club. Jeez. Mm, what a character, what a man! Mm, a little, no. A lot. No, extremely rough around the edges. Do you think uh, I could ask you a few questions? Oh, you see this? I mean, uh, I'm usually the interviewer, not the interviewee. Ten was saying a bit too loud. Am I too loud? I should probably turn down the volume on my headset. That will make me help a little bit. Not the interviewee. Journalists ask questions, not the other way around, in quote. Fine, you don't care. People have been asking me all sorts of things lately. It was tragic what happened to Drew and Missionary's daughter. Border is a serious crime and they pay the price. You know what we did them in though, don't you? Yes. A forged diary page. The night I interviewed him, I found out something that Mr. Misham and Eden hadn't have known. About what? You know, that he always felt he was being watched. Like every day for seven years. Walls have ears, potatoes have eyes, I quote. Being watched, you mean? That he felt guilty? No, 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 no. I'm not talking about feelings here. You know, I felt watched too. The whole time I've been on the case, no less. Journalist gets tingling sensation on the uh, back of neck, freaks out, end quote. Because you felt guilty? Why would I feel guilty? You felt like you were being watched, huh? I wonder what that means. I met Zack through that case, actually. You mean the shooting of Magnifi Memory? No, before that. It's not widely known. You mean the accident during the quick, quick draw shooting practice? My, 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 you're well informed. You should have seen me back then. I dug up quite a scoop. I want a young, money fame woman, a little puppy. All for me. I was younger then, and my days and nights smelled of fresh me to do now. That's a horrifying thought. Valent Grammary did mention one particularly nosy reporter. In fact, 
I was so close meeting church with Magnifi Brown Rift Eye. And my daughter too, of course. So Sala was it? Really? Then the salt disappeared quite suddenly after that. And Magnifique wouldn't say a word about it. Yeah, even even hab I even habit got the better of me. Journalist catches scent of school. Goes on feeding frenzy. End quote. I sent him a one-on-one -on -one interview with the with the Zal's husband. Zach Grammarie. Some of his training was in the air over true grammar in those days. The hard screaming mental controlling disciples seem started started by then, I guess it. Zala, she was uh, a part of it all, right? Come on, come on, you can tell me! Off the record! Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, I kept crying and eventually became friends with Jack. Sure, he punched me once or twice. Or five times. But over the time, he came to see me as his confidant. He's been waiting this whole time, man. Seven years, eh? Waiting? For his big comeback, of course! A big revival of the Magnific the Magnific Miracle! Of course, it was all just a dream. Because of this? The performance rights? In the absence of any official documents, it was golden. It was to say the old man didn't give his rights to what Zack had not. So, that one waited until Zack died. Really, at least. The time finally comes, and Malan's like a kid on the chair at Christmas morning. He's getting ready for his show at Sunshine Stadium, you know. Hey, document, this doc, that document says the light of day. It's going to put a bit of damper on the big show. Well, he was already one, that Valerie Grammarie. I was down with his bar, but I was with his partner at work, and love too. Love? It's the same old story, really. Two disciples and their mentor's only daughter. What has three sides and uh, all of them pointy? A love triangle. Hmm, that is pretty, that is pretty classic. Where in you're in the four performing in the troupe, that's your world. It's like family. One with an entire high school's worth of drama, intrigue and backstabbing. And in the middle of all that, the Sala has truce. And then she dies. I need to find out more about this Thessala. <laughs> yes, we're almost getting finishing up. Drew Misham felt like he was being watched. And you along with him? You sure it wasn't just nerves? Nerves? No. Nothing so mundane. I stopped paying attention to my nerves a long time ago. That explains a whole lot. But I felt it too. Drew was sure he was being watched in court. Don't you wonder why Zach Grammary rubbed out after seven years? Right after coming into contact with me? He completely vanishes from that courtroom. And then, for seven years, he talks to no one, not at all. Uh, yeah, I am a little bit crackly. Oh, I crack- wait, what? I am? Hold on. Is this better? Is this better? Is there any on that? that is kind of weird. Okay, that is weird. I hope that doesn't that make like that. That is doesn't isn't present for the recording. That is weird. Never had that on my uh, on uh, on the odd push. I had it for myself. My. Uh, no, not on the, it's not the wrong mic. I mean, heck, the other mic microphone is here. Uh, I can't say, really. Then, just as a time... The remaining time was almost up. He's contacted me in, in order to have this made. Okay, that was weird. And then he dies. Starting to put the piece together, are we? And you were being watched this whole time? Maybe not just me. Maybe you were too. M me? Mr. Brusha, do you know this person? 
do I know this person? Of course. I was friends with Zack after all. You hit me a few times. Five times actually. But still, I never forget his wife. Fasala Grammary. Maybe he's Grammary's only daughter. Do you think you could tell me more about her? Well, why the heck not? So, Fasala married Stack and had truth, you see? It was her second man marriage, actually. You mean she was divorced? How did her this one before? Not quite! Her late husband was a performer too. He died in an accident on stage. Tragic, really. They've only been married for a year. I didn't know. Ah! But she was a beauty. Still carry a photo, a portrait photo of her around, you see. I've known Trucy since we were a little thing too. She got the better deal, really. She got you for family, after all. What do you mean? Just reminiscing, you know. Fazala has another child besides Trucy. End quote. I fucking knew it. <laughs> oh. Not to mention there was a love triangle and all that. Ah. Uh. Here we go! Mmm, <laughs> lamb tikka. Lamb tikka is tasty. What? But, but Trusa said she was an only child. Nah, yes! This was what she had with her previous husband. Her previous husband? Her first husband who died on stage? Yep, they had them since a kid. Another orphan now. That's another one who slipped through the cracks. No idea where they are now. Oh, has another child? Do you think you could borrow this photo? Sure! I can be generous on occasion, you know. I don't th won't need this locket anymore. Better return to truth before I forget. People and events all get tangled together and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Don't you think? I'm too busy thinking of uh, wondering about bigger to listen to what you're saying. Because sometimes you just gotta accept that you won't be able to untangle it all, I think. Maybe so, but still. I have to do what I can. And I have to tell... Uh, I have to tell what I found to those who come next. Next, you say? I'm not the one who will close the curtains on this little play. Apparently that's not my role anymore. Magnifique! I was just wondering what Magnifique will think of all this. What do you mean? How do you see this in Trucy? She's got his power. You mean how I can't lie to Trucy? It was the same with Magnifique. And with his daughter, Sala. A strange thing. You think it's some um, grammar regime? <laughs> yes, Pix, absolutely. It just gets wilder and wilder. That's something very happy. Huh? Seriously? Uh, I shouldn't have any. Wait a minute. No, it's not that either. Um, let's see. Okay, sounds fine to pick. There's nothing like. I'm not really downloading anything, so I have no idea. Nothing like shows up here. Magrifi told me once back when Zack married Hathazala. He said that Zack's got good eyes. But not good like a Grammarie's eyes. Not that good. I wonder if Zack ever played a poker game with his, a game of poker with his wife. Who knows what the Grammarie's secret was? Maybe nobody. Now that Zack's gone. Zack Grammarie. The plot has finally begun to reveal itself. It sprouted from a uh, war of the grammary fabric and grew, swallowing everything. Wrapping itself around the grammary's power. <clears throat> a power which passed from Magnifique to uh, Grammary to Thessala to the next generation. 
And I will once again need to meet the one who brings it all together. to me for the time being. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Uh, okay, let's so uh, next up, Bosch Club. It's like she can see right into people's minds. The first time I saw so, so her do it, it, it blew mine. After you were done having a mind blow, you, you took her to play cards with you. Um, you gotta use the resources at hand, I always say. Yet, I myself have no such power. But Trucy does. Why is that? Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother? The Sala Grammary? I will not speak of that. The Sala is officially missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. Take that! The three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country doesn't already doesn't already know this. At your peak, you were the biggest stars around. Yet, there's another story behind the frame, one that not many know. The Sala lost her life dur during a rehearsal to you and Valent Gr Grammary's bullet. It was an accident. And it, it wasn't me. How could I shoot my dad, Thessala? I'm sure Valent would say, say the same thing. <laughs> why, it's just like another murder I might mention. Oh, why, so... It's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you. Her eyes. I love Thassala's eyes. To think that they could read my mind was frightening. Yet, there was a warmth in, in them that felt like, like an embrace. She's dead, and Magnific Grammary has joined her. So, the only one with her power left now is Chusey. Mr. Zack? I... I don't know. I don't need any power to see through that one, buddy. So there is someone else, someone other than Juicy. Someone who in inherited the Sala's power. <laughs> How would I know? A chance of slim, but I wonder if it would take a miracle, and it would take a miracle to know the truth. Or maybe one has already occurred. There is someone with else with their power, and I know who. This... this boy? His name is... Um, I forget. Um, something weird. <laughs> Who could he be? An attorney. A, 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 attorney? I noticed him when I went to visit a friend, uh, friend's law offices. Hello, Dre! Oh, Pix, no! How are you doing, Dre? So, what are we gonna make of this? Oh, great ex-attorney. You can show me pictures of strange boy all you, all you like, but you can but at least say something like, I'm this boy. I could use a laugh. Fix it not again. Huh? Because it's a Sunday. I know. It's I think it's because of that. Uh -huh. We always have weird issues with our environment. You know, clouds, the sky. Oh, like that. Yeah. So, that is true. Sad noises. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you know the facts. 
Now this not might be 100% proof, proof, but it's close. There's a link between this door and the sala. Actually, it's more of a ring. A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just so happen to have evidence that shows this missing link. Now, I would like to draw your attention here. Uh, yes, the bracelet. She has the exact same bracelets that Apollo wears. Actually, I know that something. Was kind of, that was kind of obvious from the start, though. It was in case you didn't like notice that she was wearing bracelets. Your marriage to Tessala was her second. How do you know this? Her first husband, uh, he died a year after they were wed, yes? Exactly. Like that. Well. For some reason, this washer with this lemon tastes like um, cod liver oil. I have no idea why. With lemon. I have no idea why. It's super weird. I mean, it's not as strong as cod liver oil. Um, but, like, it's small hint of it. It's kind of weird. He was a performer. They met when he joined us Grammaries as a guest in our show. And the Sala wed him. She, after the Sala wed him, she left the troop for a while. And you say she had a child then? I have a photograph of her hair. I couldn't help but notice what she was wearing when I first saw this. Those bracelets stand out. They are of Grammary family heirloom. This boy wears a bracelet just like the ones in the picture. What? So, so that's why. Why what, Zach? I took this photograph. I took this photograph of Thazal before she left us. When she returned, she wore only one bracelet. I bet I know where the other one went. She gave it to this boy, her son. The strange power. I myself do not know from where it comes. Yet, the fact that it is passed down the Grammary line that runs in our veins. What is it? I asked her, the Sala once. This is what she told me. Her power responds to tension in others. Tension? If she were to face a person that became tense, even slightly, that she would know, no matter how hard I tried to hide it from her. So, she could see it. Not quite. That's the strangest part of it all. She wouldn't realize that she was subconsciously detecting this tension without the use of a particular object, or in her case, objects. Objects? Wait, were those something... were they something she wore? Yes, her bracelets. Yeah, it does, Pex. You have the power. You, you, you repeat. Phoenix repeatedly says, you have the power. I'm also gonna put my... Like, so we don't get too much like reflection from my monitors. I admit, the first time I saw one of those, I felt like there was more to it than just a fashion. But what kind of power could a bracelet have? I haven't made a decision. I will tell you all I know. Consider it a gift. Those bracelets are made of a special alloy. It's set to expand and shrink very slightly to, uh, in response to body warmth. So they're temperature sensitive or something? Yes. This is how they can shrink to the exact size of their wearer's wrist. And this is something to do with the, that power? What have I told you? The Grammary power reacts direct tension in others. When a Grammary senses the tension, they too will become tense. And this tension translates into minute contraction of the muscles. So minute they cannot sense it on their own. Their muscles? 
Oh, so that's what those bracelets are for. With a bracelet on, one can sense those contractions. Because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So, when the person they're watching gets tense, the bracelet feels, feels tighter on the wrist. Precisely. That also doesn't really ca uh, count as mind reading. I don't even understand how the process works in there. It's a simple question of eyesight. Eyesight? I guess that sounds simple enough. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Something about the ability to, set, to see an object moving in full clarity, right? I've heard of it before. I said athletes can see a moving ball like it stopped if they focused. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. And it all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest of twitch on the face, the meaning that lies behind it. Therein lies one of the secrets of magic. One must know the mind of the crowd before uh, before one may distract it. Yep, exactly. It's the uh, discount Magatama. It's uh, <laughs> that's the trick behind it. Unlike Phoenix, who has actual magic Magatama, like spiritual power, you know. <laughs> Of course, it's borrowed power, but it's power nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, I really like how they explain the uh, Apollo's power in this game. It is really good. So, basically, what you're saying is the grammars can see it really well. For them, seeing is more than believing, it's knowing. Their power relies on eyesight combined with exceptional focus. I think they're starting to come in more into focus for me too. Of course, it's difficult to maintain such levels of focus for any length of time. But what if someone could tell you when to focus? Or something. Precisely. But wait, Trixie doesn't have any bracelets. You're talking about poker, yes? The timing of when to focus is so elementary that she's probably doing it without thinking. I doubt Trucy herself has realized this. Well, I hardly need you to tell me at this point, but those two are brother and sister, yes. And the brother too has this power of theirs. So, Trucy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. Mr. Wright, tonight after our game is done, I will return for life of hiding. I will not see her live. Her life without knowing. I understand. I'll tell the truth when the time is right. I. I'm in your debt. Once again. No kidding. What I want to know is how all of this got to be so so messed up. That is all I know of things grammarly. Thank you, Mr. Zack. If this boy's bracelet is a real thing, then he will use it before long. Thereby awakening his power. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> well, shall we play a game? Huh. I've said so much. Let me say one more thing. I will tell you of that tonight. That night. That night? The night my mentor, Magnifi Grammary, passed from this world to the next. There were two pistols and two letters were sent. This was Magnifi's test. A test? In his last years, Magnifi Grammary walked us both to the bone. No, to the pain. But at night, I could not shoot him. So I shot the clown's forehead instead. This, it seems, was the correct answer. Take this. I give to you my art, Zack. What? It is thanks for playing along with my show. You shot well tonight, Zack. Though I wouldn't have minded dying by your hand. How can I shoot you? You're my mentor. Ha! <laughs> I thought you might say that. If I went home without shooting anything, what would I have done then? Then, of course, 
I would have given Valant his chance. And if I had shot you in the forehead instead, then it would be over. If you or Valant were to shoot me in the head, then I... then I to the darkness would go, and my art A fitting end, don't you think? <laughs> Yet this ending too gives me no cause for regret. Thank you, sir. And... And I'm sorry. I have done much that was wrong in my day. It seems to me that Magnify wanted you to be a successor all along. That's why he gave you... That's, that's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valance. Perhaps, but it's not something we'll ever know for sure now. I wonder... What is Valance up to these days? Waiting for you to die. If seven years pass like this, the performance rights will go to him. Ah... And now, here I am. And his dream is ended. It's worse than that, actually, than that, actually. Public opinion is a fickle thing, you know. What? You don't mean to tell me they put the blame for our mentor's death on... on him? The trial ended when you vanished, Zack. There were even rumors that Valent helped you pull it off. But that's madness! Well, it seems before I can once again disappear from this world. I have one more act to perform. Is it odd that sorting out my life should be so complicated? Even though I'm dead? That night, Zach Grammary was killed. He died as Shadi Smith, a mysterious traveler with a secret past. But he left one thing behind before he parted. This. His confession. To use as I saw fit. Seven years passed, I, Zach Grammary, murdered my mentor, Magnifique Grammary. I apologize for the trouble caused by my sudden departure from the court, and hereby confess to my crime. Zack Grammary. Of course, he had killed no one. This was his way of tying up loose ends with his own partner, Valus Grammary. A blast from the distant past. Long time no see, Mr. Ballon. Seven years has it been? Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came here because there's something I want to ask you. But I've spoken to the press, I have nothing more to say. I've spoken to a lot of people myself and come to some conclusions. But then I realized I need to hear it from you. I have walked a difficult road in these past seven years. Because you couldn't perform Magnifi's repertoire? To not be deceived, Valent's skill is the real deal. I would require my mentor's hand-me-downs. No, it was my partner who slowed me on my way. Zach Grammary? Still a bitch. <laughs> yeah, still a bitch. But at least Trucy had Phoenix. Zach Ramry. His rather well performed disappearing act seven years ago was the end. Or oh, so I thought. Zach Ramry murdered our mentor and fled to escape the punishment of his crime. You said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? I remember it as, th th were, uh, as if it were only yesterday. Yet, that was not the, uh, uh, what, that was not the way of it in the end. 
For while he vanished, the suspicious upon my own person never did. His partner, Zack, vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of the press said. I had no idea. Yet that very same press comes to me now, feigning interest. They covered a great this magic show in history as if there was a, a, a vaudevillian distraction. And here I must stand, smiling at them all. What am I, if, a, if not a player in some fiendish farce? Might I suggest that it's because you never made it clear what happened? Maggie's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I, I came here to get the answer from you. I knew I'd be seeing some of these sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping up onto the stage. It, they must be content to sit and stare at the spotlight. That sounds awful lot like something I had heard seven years ago. Ask what you will, and you will get nothing from me. I'm not as much as part of this as you are now. I have to know what happened. For seven long years I have endured. Now, finally, the curtain lifts on my new golden age. All the miracles of our troops within my grasp. Sorry to do this moment, but right now I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should shake things up. Valen, I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have this. And what might that be? I see it bears the Grammary seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner, but I did imagine you were planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to Magnifi's Miracles. <laughs> what? Z Zach Grammary, he wrote this? What? He passed everything to his daughter. Truth the Enigma. Actually, she's officially my daughter these days. Preposterous! Zach's... Zach's gone. Vanished into the void. But this is the genuine article. Zach was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the notary can de testify to this. Uh. Whoa! Poor. This is so... Like, I feel bad for him here. Just like, he has this grand ambition, this aspiration to like, and finally now, I can perform. And then just suddenly, yeah, sorry to do this, but I'm just gonna crash your career right here and right now with this single document. <laughs> I feel bad for him. So why? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived in thrall to the dead? You're not the only one with that problem. But he shot Magnifi, yes. It was, Zack, it was. And then he left. And my magic career as a magician fell into darkness. Yeah, it is like, it is like that, Fix. Did you think there might be some, uh, some way out of it? Oh, that didn't work anything. Say, if you could prove Zach Ramry shot Magnifi, was that why you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out. Well, it might be too, not be too late, Mr. Valent. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Valent Grammary? Um. I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zach Grammary wrote one more thing before passing on. This. But this is a confession! In which he admits to the killing of Magnifi Grammary. See? All according to your plan. I am a magician by, by trade. Deception is my life's work. I fool the audience, give them a fleeting dream. Yet. 
It is seems that the tables have turned. Now I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I have wrought upon myself. Zack wrote, wrote, wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. A la carte. Zoom! <laughs> Do you know if this confession is nothing but lies? Yes, it is my opinion that Zack Bramry killed no one. Then you must be thinking that, it's, that the el truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill that if one is innocent, then the other remains guilty. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. So, he vanished to protect me, his partner. <laughs> a stirring tale, tis true? Did you shoot Grammary, uh, Magnifique Grammary in the forehead? If I had, and I told you, what you would you do? To run to the police, perchance? Do as you will, there is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all, I have a little talent. I needed my, my mental Magnifique's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed hold of me. I knew it. So, Valent Grammary did kill the great Magnifi. <laughs> ah, so sorry, Mr. Wright, but it was not I who shot that man. What? But if it wasn't you, then, then who was it? There wasn't another disciple, was there? Another disciple, such as, I don't know, Knack and Talent Grammary, maybe? Your wild fancies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Valent received those threatening letters. But if there was another, one more person who could have fired the pistol that night. I don't suppose you have figured it out by now. It wasn't Zack or Valet who shot Magnifi. Then it had to be the only other person at the scene. Which means. Wait. You don't mean. Yes. The great Magnifi Grammary himself. Fasala. So Magnifi Grammary committed suicide. You find that hard to believe? To be honest. I hadn't even imagined it as a possibility. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I... I could not shoot him. But when I turned and made to leave the room, the old man called out to me. So, you spoke with Magdi Grammary? Yes. And this is why I knew what he had done. Magnifi transferred right to his repertoire to my partner, Zach Grammary, not me. I see. Then I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology. Huh? My crime was, in a way, more serious than murder. What? Your crime? Is Valley Grammary confessing something to me? What could be more serious than murder? You see, I knew the two letters had been sent. If there are no secrets between partners, it was easy to find out. That was when I understood Magnifique's plan. He wanted to die by one of your ha yours hands? Little did I expect it had anything to do with the rights to his repertoire. That was when I heard it. The little demon whispering in my heart. The demon? Let me confess. I had intended to shoot Magnifi. And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. What? 
That night, I preferred something before going to Magnifi's hospital. Which was? Ivy fluid, of course. I'd seen it on an earlier visit. If Zack did or shoot, I would do the deed. Then, I would use the ivy liquid to replace a murder on his to place a murder on his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. The demon in my heart fled the moment when the moment came. But then Magnifi called me back. I am sorry, Valent. I am giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please help him if you can. I left the room, and then I stopped. The shock of what I had just been told consumed me. That is when I heard that fateful gunshot. Mangy Grammar killing himself. Then the demon awoke a new wind within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Frank. And the magic will be yours. I. I altered the scene of his suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped up the prints. And then I used a syringe to add the IV liquid I had bought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. Magnifi died and you framed Cypher's murder. As planned indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different from what I had anticipated. Well, what do you think? Do you believe my story? Can it be believed? Truly? That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe, but yes, I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Valent. Thank you. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Wright. Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. You're going to turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And as my guilt stays, all else begins to leave me. My friends, my performance rights, my magic. I have had enough of vanishing acts. I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But I find myself I was wrong. For Zack said Grammary was alive. Well, not anymore. And now it occurs to me. What if he was not the only one who survived? What do you mean? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I... No, we never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. Of uh, um, her? The mind races and the mouth flapped on. <laughs> My apologies, forget this much. I can only hope that the day will come when my partner, when I will meet my partner again, Zach Grammary. Then, then I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. I am glad we had this chance to talk. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm about to cry here because I'm just like, Channeling him, yeah, it's like channeling how Valent feels, like this relief of just getting everything out. I was crying here. Uh. Zach Grammary, Shaddy Smith, whichever name you prefer, he's no longer with us. The truth, re truth revealed in that trial was only a sliver. The and the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken the line of light. I knew what I'd have to do to push back the darkness for good, and it would involve paying that man a visit.
sorry, sir. Prisoner Christoph Gavin is currently occupied. I see. Do you know when he'll be finished? Ah, um, well... Could you go find out? Ah, certainly, sir. Please wait here a moment. My apologies to the guard, but there's something I need to see. There it is. The yellow envelope. And the sender is... Drew Miss Ham. I was right. If this is the last letter that Drew Miss Ham wrote, then there's something I need to do. The last thing I need to do is that. There it goes. Let's see if this atropin spray finds anything. So, this was Drew Misham's messengers of messenger of death. It was the state damp, all right. There's no mistaking it. And his last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. The interview request came, and like you said, like you said it would. And then looking into the case, I swear on my life I won't tell them about you, so please, please release the spell you put on my daughter. I'll write about it later with a report. Gotcha. Finally, decisive evidence. Oh, what's this? A burglar in jail. <laughs> Gavin, I didn't know you moonlighted with in larceny, right? Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? <laughs> the answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Vera Missum hasn't received her verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin? There are no known survivors of atropine poisoning, but it never helps to hope. Okay, I'll be leaving now. Right, wait. Yeah, Gavin? Would you mind leaving that letter? It is private. Oh, sorry, forgot I had it. Many thanks. So sneaky. <laughs> and I don't think this is a two consent party. Uh, like two cons uh, two party consent. Yeah, smug is exactly it. We've now seen all the clues in this case. Clues I gather over seven long years. Now it is time. Every story has an ending. We'll come to the final chapter. The final trial. Find the truth. You are the only ones who can. Hello, Bello. How are you? Also, I really like the way Phoenix talks here because, like, he's... The way 